What up gamers, I'm Jason and today on Dyson Dragons, I'm going to be unboxing Tokyo Sidekick number one. Well, the game is Tokyo Sidekick. The reason there's a number one is that there are multiple expansions for this available in Japan. We should see some of them coming out here in North America, provided that the Kickstarter campaign is successful. So hopefully we'll get 1.2, 1.1. Maybe wondering why I said 1.2. Well, point two is going to be included during the Kickstarter. I believe there's a number two and a number three, but don't quote me on that. If you are interested in finding out more about the Japanese releases of Tokyo Sidekick, well, you can just take a look at the Japanese publisher's website, Little Future. You'll be able to find the information, but I believe it's all in Japanese. And of course, this North American edition is published by Japanime Games. Now the game is designed by Yusuke Emi, and the translation to bring this game over to North America was done by Maisie Hatcher. Now, just want to give her some credit because there's a lot of text in this game. I mean, heroes, sidekicks, backgrounds. So she's done a great job of getting the game over here. Now, what are you going to be doing in Tokyo Sidekick? Well, there's trouble in Tokyo. There's going to be different events happening across the city. You will take on the role of a hero and you will also control different sidekicks. Now you can match up any hero and any sidekick. You must move around the city, defeating these events, as well as stopping dastardly villains and foiling their schemes. Then of course, defeating the much larger criminal mastermind that's behind everything in order to win the game. Now with that being said, let's take a look at what's in this giant box. Now let's take a look at what's in the box for Tokyo Sidekick. Now I'm going to do my best to take uh, the components close to the camera. We are just about on our maximum zoom here. As you can see, we've got quite a large box. And let's see what we got. So we have Tokyo Sidekick rule book. We also have the Tokyo Sidekick Day 1 Adventure. Pretty cool. So we'll just flip through this quickly. Very neat. So we got a nice setup for the game with the comic book. Definitely going to enjoy reading it. So number one is the base game. Number two is the expansion, Dead on the Asylum. Well, looking forward to that. So here we've got the rule book. Get a little bit of background on the story. Nice layout. Good overview of the heroes and their sidekicks. Explanation how to win the game. Oh, that's really neat. So looks like we've got a lot of just the basic stuff laid out. Then we get just some more of the rules here. Character abilities, enemy abilities, FAQ. So you're really only looking at about a 16 page rule book. The rest of the book is background on all the different characters. And as someone that really loves lore, whether it's for games or for other uh, other things as well, book series, RPGs, it's a lot of fun and I'm really happy that we have this nice level of lore in the game. Well, a little bit better than nice level, I'd say a, a really solid level of lore. So, ooh, there's a mini expansion that you can get as well. So I do know that we're seeing that the other expansion is going to come with a Kickstarter, so that's pretty cool. Uh, as we are filming this after the page has gone live. And I'm going to do my best to get this whole board on the camera, but this is a rather large board. So I'm going to just focus in on this part right now. So I believe part of it's probably going to be cut off over here. We'll slide it back over so you can see it. Now, if you do know Tokyo, you know, Shinbachi, Roppongi, those are areas that are well known. So I do love the fact that we have the whole city. Now, unfortunately, the board is a little bit damaged. We'll do our best to fix that. And we'll just bring this down. Take a look. We've got the Adachi Asylum. Shinjuku, Ikibukuro, Waseda. Definitely know uh, these places from my time in Japan. And there is a three to four player side to the board. 
and a two player side to the board. So we'll take a look at that. Now this is not a full production copy of the game. This is a pre-production uh, copy. This is definitely one for previews. So with that in mind, one thing I just wanted to mention is that what you're seeing here in terms of the insert, this is not how the actual insert is. It is designed to hold all of the acrylic pieces if you decide to get that upgrade as well. So just make a note of that when you're taking a look at this unboxing. So here we've got what looks to be our secret organization good. We can get some power ups, power, speed, concentration. So we've got two levels of those. We've got the hero boards, so our player boards, different character, different colors. We've got this nice stack of hero cards here. Let's take a look what we've got. And we're gonna go through this a little quickly. As you can see, there are a lot of cards, but uh, good quality. Components, nice finish. You may want to sleeve them, but I don't think you necessarily have to. Don't feel like there's gonna be a lot of shoveling with these. So we've got cool guy. So we can see their special skill, get information on the real name and what he likes to do in Japan. Cyber Tengu, their skill. I like armor, the gray rabbit, moon princess. We'll take, we'll take a look at some of their skills. Choose an enemy on the map and move Kaguya Girl to that space. Well, that's her skill, sorry, her name is Kaguya Girl. We've got Melty Sweet. Melty Sweet can perform actions during other players' turns as it was her own turn. Just trying to see this last little bit. Character effects apply even during other players' turns. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit more. Used to having it at our standard unboxing level. We've got King Android. Oni's player can swap places. Well, that's his ability, sorry. The Operation Nuclear Infantry. Oni's player can swap the places of two of their own player characters. Pretty cool. Samurai Man, Master Ronin. Samurai Man gets X attack when X is the number of energy cards Samurai Man used for his attack. Snake Kiss. Healing Factor, you can heal any number of damage cards from your hand, then draw the same number of cards from your deck. Sonic Shadow. Move Sean Xano to any space, the Ninja Speedster. So here we've got the sidekicks, and we'll just take a quick look at some of the characters that were not up close. So, Cool Guy, Cyber Tengu, Elec Armor, definitely Iron Man based. Elec Armor, and he's a millionaire. Grey Rabbit, Batman idea, seasoned crime fighter. And then we're back to Kaguya Girl, so let's go over here and see what we have. So we have Chamaru, real name Chamaru, likes munching on Samurai Man's forearm. So he can have a hero gadget. You got the Alpha Kid with the Sixth Sense. Vanilla Girl. Haruki Takumara, an expert detective. Smoothie Bear. Kevin Parks, who's a reliable friend. I love the fact that he looks a little bit like Luke Cage there. We've got Jinx Cat. Lucky Kitty on a whim, can hold a hero gadget. The Battlemobile, piloted by James Kiritani. Oda Glamour, High Q, definitely reminds me a little of Oracle. And here we've got some of the menaces Dokan, the Castle of Darkness, Fujisengen, and King Kaiju. What is a Japanese hero game without some type of kaiju? That's awesome. Then some other enemies we've got the 8 bit master, and that's just such a great idea with Nintendo coming from Japan. Jinx Cat, so I guess she can be a hero or a villain, a little bit like Catwoman. Mirror, Sakura Wolf, Sand Shark, Shot Geisha, Soul Bandit, Ribbon Raider, Yasha the Witch. We also have Cool Guy, so I guess he can be a villain too. Dr. Quake, Great Sumo. Kabuki, Metal Impulse, Curse, Shiwasu Tycoon, The Sushi Bot, and Wabi Sabi. I like that design. Yata. And now we're back to the start. Be interesting to take a look at these uh, characters' information in more detail and see what we're going to get. Now, 
We do have colored bases. So as you notice, there's colored player boards. So you're gonna have enough for a few of your different characters that you'd be controlling on the game board. Now we'll just put these back. And with the load of characters we have, I don't think we're gonna get a chance to go through all of the standees. So we do get some tokens here. I love that everything's pre-bagged. So XP, we've got some lock and unlock tokens, fire tokens, sushi tokens, not quite sure what this one is for. So I haven't gotten through the rule book yet. This looks like a panic or warning token, something like that. This may be the first player token. This could also be a token to indicate something important on the map. Now, for those of you that do not know uh, the channel, we actually do not read the rules or anything like that before we go into our unboxing. We like to go blind into these. So that's why I'm not sure what exactly everything does. So we'll get this packaging open and we'll take a look at the cards we've got here. Nice quality to them. So we have power cards, speed cards, concentration cards, and more of the same. Now they all have the same back with Tokyo Sidekick. Now you notice that all of these ones here were, were singles. The ones that we got here are doubles and triples. I'll double check the ones that I looked at. Here are the damage cards that you're gonna get. And they also all have the same back. So I'm guessing, and I probably just went over too quickly. Yeah, these were all doubles. So we've got the single doubles, triples for these cards. Now let's just place the hero powers well, not the hero pairs, the heroes back where they go. Take a look at the other set of cards that we have. And these look to be different events across the city, Osaki, Tamachi, Shinobashi, for example, an Archie, Art Thief, Lost Pet, giving directions, research lab break-in, different things that are gonna be happening across the city of Tokyo. Ayama, town cleanup. Shinagawa, Runaway Train. Now, I'm not quite sure what these are, but Amazing Duo Attack plus six. Wonder Trinity Attack plus four. We get some equipment. So for Cool Guy, Ice Rifle, Glacial Coaster, Diamond Quest, Cyber Tengu's Gadgets. So all of this stuff looks to be the equipment that you're gonna be getting for your main heroes that will allow you to boost up their abilities, but don't forget this is Tokyo Sidekick, so those sidekicks are a big part of the game as well, and we're eager to get this to the table, possibly uh, later on uh, after this unboxing is finished. If not, it'll definitely be over the weekend. Now we've got all of the standees that come with the game, so we'll do our best to just showcase some of them. But you get a good idea. Villains in black, which I like. It helps to note them very easily. Flying sushi. We've got the sidekicks in blue. Looks like we've got some of the lesser villains in white, whereas the other ones we look, the ones in black seem to be the uh, criminal masterminds. Or I could have it backwards, find out when uh, we get the review. Uh, I want to get to playing actually, so we work on the review. But considering that uh, we've got King Kaiju here, I definitely see the bad guys are in black. And you can see we've got our heroes. I'm trying to just grab all the heroes right now and separate them. Actually, you know what? Instead of looking at the heroes, we'll finish looking at the villains. Quite a few more of the white standees, but not as many as heroes, and uh, 
It looks like there's more heroes than sidekicks, actually, which would make sense. It gives you more variety with your main player, but a little bit of standard heroes, well, standard abilities for your sidekicks. So here are some of the other lesser villains and lifting this up as well as I can, trying to showcase everything. I love the art style. But then again, I'm, I'm a fan of anime, been watching this stuff for uh, <laughs> as long as I can remember. Even I think watching Mazinger Z and uh, Italian. Don't ask me why, it's a long story. If you're curious, feel free to uh, ask me in the comics, comments and I'll explain it. Here are the uh, different sidekick standees that we got. So, good quality cardboard, no complaints. I do also like that they are pre-punched and sorted. Anything that comes with less waste is something that I like. We also have the baggies here to help organize the cards and make sure they don't go everywhere. And, uh, I was getting ready to put that away. How can I put that away without taking a look at the heroes? So, all the nice hero standees. Love the art and the style. And uh, considering I've become a fan of Sorry, I'm dropping this stuff too. It's just holding so many of them, but very cool. What I was saying is I've become a fan of My Hero Academia. This kind of gives me a feel of, of that, just with the art and everything. Not necessarily the powers of the world, but love the fact they're running around Tokyo. And of course, our Ninja Speedster. So those are all the components that you're going to be getting with just the base game of Tokyo sidekick very happy to see that there are already expansions and more stuff coming for it now Before I put everything away We did actually also get the acrylic Upgrades so we'll take a quick look at the upgrades, but You know idea what the base is we've got black bases for Villains, white bases, we got the yellow bases. We also have turquoise for our sidekicks. Now you'll notice there is a thin film on them as they've been set up, they've been set like that too in order to protect them. And as we just went over all of the standees, we're not gonna take a look at all of them, but when you see all the different Acrylic ones, they also have the plastic coating to protect them. Now, these ones aren't colored like their bases, but I think having the colored bases is more than enough to let you tell them apart, especially once you place all the, sta the standees on them and get everything organized the way you'd like in the box. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do that since we have the uh, pre-production uh, insert, but we'll take off because this one looks like it's coming off fairly easily. So I'm going to try to take off the protection, the plastic. It is on there fairly well, so it's not that easy. Probably want to go after it someplace where it's not near what, near the character. But this gives you an idea as to how awesome the characters look in acrylic. There's a nice finish on there. You've got protection on the back as well. Much easier to take off as you don't have the character. So just keep that in mind, but beautiful components. Really happy that we have these upgrades as well. If you're the kind of person that thinks you're gonna be a big fan of this, I'd recommend probably getting everything in acrylic as well. Also anything in plastic, it's just gonna last you that much longer. So I'm not quite sure how this stuff is gonna go back in the box. So as I did with the bases, I'm gonna put it off camera, but it gives you a good idea as to what you're gonna be getting with regards to Tokyo Sidekick. Now, keep it right here as I'll be coming back at you with a quick outro. Thank you very much for watching everyone. If you like what you saw, don't forget to click the like button, comment, subscribe, Hit the notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when our next video is released. Also, down below in the video description, you'll find links to all of our social media feeds. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
If you'd like to see some pictures of Julie and I playing Tokyo Sidekick, they will all be on those feeds. Now, popping up in front of me, you're gonna have links to some of our previously released videos. The first one is gonna take you to our most recent release. The other will take you to a previously released Japanime Games review. And then once it's available, it will take you to our review on how to play of Tokyo Sidekick. And with that being said, don't forget, keep playing games.